I mean, I got rejected from 80% of the schools I applied to. I was fourth in my class. I had decent SAT scores, not great, but, you know, passable. And enough to get into an honors college, let's just say, at Penn State, but not to get into Harvard or anywhere else for that, like, at that level. But my school was a blue ribbon school. They really hyped us up. They told us we could, like, shoot for the stars. The kids in the previous senior class had gotten into so many Ivy Leagues and so many of those students didn't have the resume and the work that I did. I just, I don't know. I think I just got sold a false bill of goods and I applied to all these really high caliber schools and I got into a few of them, but by and large, none of the rest. And Penn State was at the very bottom of the of the list. And it was, the only reason I applied to Penn State was because my father, at one point, I didn't really involve my parents in the application process. And I was like, I got this. And but my dad turned to me one day and he said, can I have the list of where you're applying and what these schools cost? And I said, don't worry, dad, the student that my my teachers say there's this thing called student loans and it's you don't need to know what they cost because we'll just get student loans. And he said, to hell we will. You know, we're <laughs> we don't take out debt for college. My dad is Iranian and so is my mom. And he came to America on a full ride to get you know, his studies done and all the way through his PhD. So I thought he was biased. I said, you know, dad, that was a different time. There's no, you know, I'm not going to get a full, full ride. Uh, you got to do student loans. And he said, no. Okay. He said, listen, I got to cash flow this out of my salary. So I don't think you're going to be able to go with these sticker prices to any of these schools. So he said, let's apply to Penn State because we're in state. We were living in Pennsylvania at the time. And it's a great school. He said, you know, if you want to go to graduate school, which you're Iranian, so you will, um, you need to go to a school where they have a really good research department and where you can learn anything you want. And Penn State is a really great feeder school for graduate programs. They have their own great graduate program. I was like, he's just like, Dad, stop talking about graduate school. I just want to get into college. Just stop right. it. And he said, please just do this so I can sleep at night and you will definitely get into Penn State. And, I, and then I applied to the honors program because it felt for me, like that was the the sort of sweet spot where I was what I didn't like about Penn State at the time where I thought I wouldn't like was that it was 50,000 students big and had I was always a, I wanted a, the small liberal arts college and the honors college was that liberal, liberal arts experience within a gigantic campus where my class sizes were, you know, 20. And I did ha I did have some big, you know, 400 person classrooms at the at, at when I was doing my gen eds but um, a lot of, I got early access to applying for my my courses which was really at, at Penn State and a lot of state schools very competitive you you can't take your classes because you were not the first one to sign up and I got to live in a dorm with um, other honors students as well as I got like a little bit of both you know I got mm -hmm. the the honors kids who were nerdy and really, you know, type A. And then I got the kids who wanted to go to football games and in party. And um, I think that's important. I think I didn't recognize the value in both of those exposures um, at that age. I thought that I had to just kind of pick a lane. And honestly, now that I'm t saying all this out loud, I'm like, oh, my God, that was when I learned that you don't have to pick a lane. And right. it kind of led to my career path and being an entrepreneur. But uh, it was financially a great move. I was, but I was kicking and screaming all the way there. You know, I just thought that this was such a rejection for me. I didn't, I was like, why? Why did I work so hard if this That's was going to be it? So this wasn't your dream? No, um, it wasn't my dream. After the, after the second year of being at Penn State, I had friends. I was doing fine, but I just felt like, no, this isn't for me. And I, I remember going home during winter break and my mom and I had talked about it and she said, listen, I don't and I don't think transferring is the answer here. I think that um, you're taking on too much at Penn State. Here's what was happening. I think I was so unhappy that I was overwhelming my schedule with things. I was like, mm -hmm. you know, I can't have any downtime here. I need to just have three jobs and take, I want to get out of here as fast as possible. So I'm taking 24 credits. Yeah. And of course I was upset and depressed and sad by the end of winter break. And I came home, my mom said, I don't think Penn State's the problem. I think you're the problem. I think you're doing too much. I want you to take next semester and just take 15 credits. Take 12 to 15 credits, the bare minimum. 
Right. Don't over don't overwhelm your schedule. Have some free time. Um, do one extracurricular, not ten. Yeah. Quit your jobs, and see what happens. If you still don't like Penn State at the end of that, well, we can talk about next steps. But I think that it's not the school; it's your approach. Yeah. To college, 